This year marks the 25th anniversary of Pacific Biodiesel, the company founded on Maui in 1995 by Bob and Kelly King that was the catalyst to commercial biodiesel production in America. Recognized as a pioneer in biodiesel technology, Bob King built the nation's first commercial biodiesel processing plant, recycling used cooking oil as a feedstock and opened the first retail biodiesel pump in America both on the island of Maui. After building 13 plants across the US and in Japan, today the company's operations are focused back home in Hawaii. Their refinery produces 5.5 million gallons of biodiesel annually and contributes to the energy security as the only commercial producer of liquid biofuels in the state. The conference is honored to welcome our keynote presenter, Bob King, founder and president of Pacific Biodiesel. To hear the story of this inspiring company's 25 year journey from the beginning of the industry and its evolution through the years to meet changing regulations and technology requirements. Please join me in welcoming Bob King. Hello, this is Bob King, president of Pacific Biodiesel. And I'm talking to you from the island of Maui, Hawaii, where I've lived for the last 40 years. Um, honored to be here and, um, and uh, do a little talk about, I've been asked to talk about our journey through biodiesel from the early days and uh, until today and a little bit about the technology that we've um, initiated over the years. So our very first plant was in Maui in 1995, we started, and uh, this is a little 250,000 gallon per year water wash plant. Uh, very basic. Um, at that time, there was no ASTM spec, so we just made fuel that we thought was good. And being a diesel mechanic, I'd put it in my truck, and yep, that that works. And just trying to figure out what what biodiesel really is all about, and especially making it from waste cooking oil, which is what the only thing we used at the beginning. So um, at one time, this plant was 20% of the US biodiesel production, and we sold all of it on Maui. And while we were selling fuel on Maui, one day uh, in walks uh, Woody Harrelson, um, he had Heard, heard about our fuel and wanted to know how he can start using it. Uh, we told him he needed a diesel car. So an hour later, he came back with a Volkswagen diesel Beetle and filled it up. And he and his, his wife, Laura, and their family have been on biodiesel on Maui ever since. Uh, for us, it was a little, little uh, shocking to, that when, one day we're um, dealing with grease at the landfill and then in walks celebrities and uh, uh, yeah, such as these folks with a, with a passion to do what we wanted to do, which was make a different form of energy locally. But we didn't stay local. The next year, uh, we were approached by the American Soybean Association to build a plant for Sal Yoshida. Uh, he was um, one of the organizers of the 98 Winter Olympics in Nagano, Japan. And he also wanted to run renewable energy in a lot of the vehicles around the Olympics uh, that year. So with a year and a half to go till the Olympics, we, we shook hands and said, yep, we're in, we'll, we'll build a plant, bring it over, assemble it in Nagano. And we did have it running before the Olympics. And one of the projects we did was to take fuel from, or oil from a KFC restaurant that Saul owned right across from the M-Wave Stadium, uh, take it to the biodiesel plant, make it into biodiesel. The fuel went back to the KFC restaurant where it went into a cogen unit to make air conditioning and heat and another generator to make all the electricity. So this, restaurant was 100% renewable powered. 
Uh, we think it might have been the first restaurant, or certainly the first KFC restaurant in the world to do that. And um, really nice closed loop recycling. We like that. And then, uh, then, then another, another celebrity walks in, or actually uh, a celebrity's wife. Annie Nelson saw something about us in a, in a, in a local uh, publication and uh, also wanted to get on biodiesel. So she got a Volkswagen station wagon, came down, filled it up, took it home. Willie looked at it and said, well, how's that gonna work? And, after it did work for a long time, he, he got to thinking about it. And Willie thought, this supports his farming friends who are growing oil seeds. And it's good for his trucking friends that are making a living on the, on the road. So farmers, truckers, it was, it was about Willie. And Willie was about biodiesel. So he got he got a car and then running, started running all his buses on biodiesel. And, um, and, and, then, and then he had this other, the other idea. He invited Kelly and I down to Texas to listen to one of his concerts. And while we were there, said, why don't, why don't we build a biodiesel plant here in Texas, right next to my truck stop? And uh, sure enough, we did. We built a plant, had a pipe pipeline from the biodiesel plant to the truck stop and made, made fuel out of local cottonseed oil and used cooking oil and sold it at the truck stop. And it was our first foray into biodiesel on a commercial level with Willie. Then there was a construction boom. Boy, there was plants going up everywhere. Um, and we built a few ourselves. So we built, you know, in a couple of years, we built a half a dozen plants from Alaska to Texas, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, California. Always the community scale plants, though. We, we didn't go into the big plants. Uh, we wanted something that could draw from the community. So. Most of our plants were under, under five, certainly under 10 million gallons a year. And meanwhile, um, we, we were getting more, more friends in Maui that were stepping up and really putting us in the spotlight that, that they had. Um, Jack Johnson and his wife Kim were, were, were another couple that, um, said, you know, well, let's promote your story about biodiesel because the world needs to be thinking about biodiesel and less about fossil fuel. So Jack invited us to be on the cover and this was the first intelligent optimist cover of Ode magazine and um, Jack uh, wanted, wanted us to share his spotlight and be on the cover. It's very, very humbling and fun. Uh, he ran all of his tour buses on biodiesel from, from here on, had a biodiesel tank at his house and for his cars, so, and a big advocate of biodiesel. But we realized that not all biodiesel was made correctly and sustainably. And, and you know, certainly rainforest um, issues in, in Southeast Asia were a concern. So. Uh, Kelly and Annie Nelson and Daryl Hanna got together and said, "Let's let's start let's start talking about this, um, so that the biodiesel industry can can keep keep what we have going with local production and sustainable biodiesel, and not get painted with the same brush as the non-sustainable in, in a biodiesel." Um, and uh, we, again, used the uh, celebrity uh, voices to get the message out. And I think it was very successful. So then 
in uh, in two about uh, 2002, there was actually a ASTM specification for biodiesel, and by 2008, it had changed maybe nine times. Uh, it got tighter and tighter, of course, and so we decided we really wanted to go to the next level of technology. So we took our little organ plant and made it into a larger organ plant. Still 5 million, 6 million gallons a year at that time. And uh, Willie and, and Annie and the Johnsons came in as investors on this one. Said, let's, let's do this, let's go to the next level. So this is a, had a, a fair amount of automation in this plant, uh, methanol recovery, um, and, but, and the big change we made was going to a dry wash from the water wash. So we used a Magnazol uh, system to, to cleanse the ester at the other end. Um, turned out really well, Did, made, made some really nice feel here um, and, um, and started thinking about the rest, you know, what, what was gonna be next. And what was going to be next was the the technology of diesel engines was changing. Uh, I could see that all the way back in 2007. And we had to do better with our fuel and also go into more degraded feedstocks. So we were collecting grease trap waste in Hawaii at the time, but my engineers were like, no, we're not gonna make fuel out of that because we don't know what else is in there that's not in the biodiesel spec. And so the solution was to go to distillation. So engineers Will Smith and Tim Manili designed a high vacuum distillation plant uh, from the ground up at our size, which is five to six million gallons a year of capacity. This, this uh, facility strips the methanol from glycerin and the biodiesel portion, recycled it in, uh, back into pure methanol to go into the front of the system, um, and then distilled the biodiesel at, at, the, at the end, which allowed us to never have a problem with cold soak and the other issues that some of the uh, water wash and other plants were having. Of course, we wanted to be as sustainable as possible, so we put in a biodiesel generator to make all the electricity to run the plant. And we figured out how to use the column bottoms to run our boilers to make all the heat for the plant out of, out of the vegetable oil. So 100% um, um, renewable energy, both for heat and electricity. So we, the next thing we focused on, rather than getting bigger or doing more, is we, we look back the other way of what, how do we get more feedstock in Hawaii? And how are we able to run the degraded feedstocks that we get from rendering plants and other places off the mainland? And one of the problems was poly, um, plastic that had been melted into the oil at the rendering plants. So we built a, a system using a pressure leaf filter and uh, particular types of filter medium. That's the upper right hand corner. And this system will take poly out of, out of rendered oils. And uh, that's important for the distillation uh, system especially because poly and distillation don't play well together. On the other side, uh, our Oahu plant, the bottom left, was has been processing a lot of, all, almost all the grease trap waste on, on Oahu uh, for many years, but we weren't getting all the oil out of the grease trap waste. So we went back to the, to, uh, the engineering side and figured out a system that would 
of a decanter and a disk stack centrifuge in line and uh, to pull out all of the oil out of grease trap waste. And then whatever was left over, we ran through a, a fan press to make it into a dry solid. And the water we treated through a DAF system so that it would meet the city and county standards and it discharges into the sewer system. So we eliminated our waste products at this facility and also increased the amount of trap grease and uh, that we are able to salvage out of the grease trap waste that we collect. And all that uh, really nice clean fuel that we were making, uh, we needed a home for it. And one of the homes we found was this brand new power plant that um, Wine Electric built at the Army Base Schofield Barracks. These are, there are six uh, Wartzilla V20 uh, generators making about nine megawatts each. So this is a 50 megawatt power plant. It's been running on 100% biodiesel for, for several years since, since it started up. And it has the unique ability um, compared to their other units that it can come online from zero to 50 megawatts in about two minutes. And what the re utility realized is that this is the future of power generation for the islands. Um, obviously, photovoltaic and wind are, are very inexpensive uh, per kilowatt hour once the systems are installed, but they're, they have their ups and downs and it's hard to run high levels on the grid without fast start backup. So these engines, uh, because they start up fast, they're able to keep them off uh, most of the time and off is very, very efficient. Um, but when they need them, um, like I say, in two minutes, they can be online and powering. And um, this, is, this allows the grid to go further into uh, PV and wind than, than they thought they, were, they could before. So very, very fun project and a, a good one for us. So what's next? <clears throat> in, in our case, next generation is actually the next generation. Uh, this is my daughter, Jenna. She's one of the next generation uh, people that are, are running Pacific Biodiesel now. Um, unlike me, uh, who didn't graduate college, she did graduate college with a environmental engineering or environmental uh, studies degree, uh, went back and got an MBA and, and applied that top to bottom on our, our company. Uh, she's worked Grew up in the industry, grew up in the business, uh, has never owned a gasoline car, believe it or not, uh, has only owned biodiesel cars her whole life. Um, and she worked in the trucking division, in the, in the marketing and sales, and um, now is director of operations for the islands. And uh, uh, by, by mandate of the team, they like they really wanted her to be in that position. And with the rest of our team, who are also very talented, almost a hundred people that we have working in all the different um, divisions in Hawaii. And this next generation is thinking of ways to improve and make everything more efficient and therefore keep our costs in line. Very proud of her and everybody that's working for us. We are, we are using all of the waste oil in Hawaii. And so uniquely for Hawaii, we need to go into oil seed crops. And we've been playing with a few things. Um, our first sunflower field was quite a hit because 
after a hundred years of growing sugar and pineapple, um, when those two industries shut down on Maui, we we were a little lost. What what are we going to do with all these lands? And this was just a nice bright reminder that there are other ways um, and other products that we can crops that we can grow for different things. So we're using this for food and fuel. We make culinary oil as well as oil for biodiesel. And it's a, it, we have to figure out how to do this well and do it at scale for Hawaii. Now the mainland, there's still lots of waste grease. So um, there's, there's, and there's of course a lot of soybean oil. So different places, different things. The main thing is, what's in your community. Um, and I think with the pandemic, we're all realizing that what's around your community is, is a, a nice piece to support uh, for the jobs to start with, but also those long worldwide supply chains can be very problematic when in, the, in times of crisis. So we're, We'll do what we can here in Hawaii and see where we get to. And was it worth it? From, well, look at that. I didn't even have any gray in my beard when we started on the right, picture on the right there. <laughs> uh, but I've earned my gray. Um, yeah, it was worth it. It's been, a, it's been a wild ride, ups and downs. Thought we were going to go out of business several times. But, um, we, we figured a way forward and, and uh, it's, it, it's felt good and it continues to drive us on. And I hope it, for, all the, for all the people in the industry that have also been here, done this, um, you know, thanks to everybody that has helped put this industry together and um, found a way to get forward and solve the issues that came up. And I'm sure you'll all um, be looking at ways to get us another 25 years in the biodiesel business. Uh, have a good conference and aloha. <laughs>